Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. So glad you're here on this Thursday morning. We've got a big show lined up. But first, as always, our weather. Brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin and Highway 77. Uh, as I say on a weekly basis, all kind of great programs out there that you really would enjoy no matter what age you are. And you can learn something. You just never stop learning. I, I, I'm on, I've always said I'm going to take that welding class out there, and I still still may do it. But a uh, great nursing program and some other good programs out there, too. So uh, run by and check them out at Haney Technical Center. Now, listen, the weather, you know, was all week sort of been unsettled and all. It's going to continue that. The high today is going to be 75 and low tonight 61. Water temperature is going up to 60, it's going up another degree, up to 62 degrees. And like I said, uh, I'm going to show you some pictures of a pompano caught last week and all kind of things. So, uh, but don't, we, we're not in the spring run yet. They haven't busted loose, so don't get too excited. We're going to talk more about this tomorrow on the fr uh, famous Friday fishing forecast. So, let's take a look at our uh, tide chart. River's pretty level and not a lot going on. We'll talk about the rivers later on too. But let's take a look at a tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. Today is Thursday, March the 12th. We're looking at a low tide at 1227 this morning and a high tide at 225 this afternoon. And what I like about that, got a strong incoming tide and then outgoing. So we're still going, you can fish whatever you like, an incoming tide in the morning or outgoing tide in the afternoon. It's good spring tides, some good tides coming up for the weekend. So it's, it's going to be really, really good for us. The marine forecast will be southeast about eight miles per hour. So. You can get on a lot of times, uh, even without using a trolling motor, you can get in some of these situations like St. Joe Bay, uh, got a good southeast and just drift across those flats uh, quietly. There's some really good fishing and all. So uh, it's not going to be not going to be bad fishing uh, today and, and for the weekend, it looks like, if you can just dodge some of this weather. Okay? Uh, let's take our break and we'll be right back. <sighs> All right, welcome back. Trying to get everything in order here. And uh, one of the things, I ran into some folks the other day, they were asking, they were talking about leases and all. You know, we'd mentioned that before uh, for next year. And a lot of times this time of year, everybody's putting in the leases and trying to trying to get everything situated. And, and one of the things they're trying to do is, is, you know, trying to find out. And I made a little list. I just want to mention this uh, and, you know, what it costs per acre just in general now. You're going to be able to get some different ones and all. But uh, one of the things... Uh, five to ten dollars an acre, uh, it would be average. Uh, each member and, and most of the clubs I've talked to, the member brings about a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars to the to the table. And uh, I, I saw where you know hunting season over, but I saw where several different leases and all. They have a big end of the year party. I saw where Ben Steele and and the, the Seven Oaks Hunt Club. They just had a big uh, shrimp boil at the end. It was going to be deer meat and all, but had a big shrimp boil and all at the end of the year and sort of making plans for next year. And it's just good camaraderie and a lot of fun and all. A couple things to look for. Uh, make sure you can use the property year round. I wrote that down. Uh, check with it, if you if it's a new lease, check with the previous year uh, what all was done. Uh, also, try to find out who your neighbors are, who you're surrounded by. And I mentioned that if a bunch of outlaws on a lease next to you, that's not good because they're gonna be uh, shooting everything. But most, most of the folks now uh, uh, we, we definitely out, outnumber the outlaws, and, uh, but always just be careful of that and all, and you don't want to get in an area where you're not going to be happy with your neighbors. That's, that's real important. Make sure you can bring your camper in there. Uh, if you got power, fine. If not, uh, you know, for the weekend, you can do a generator, and a lot of, a lot of guys do, are doing that, putting up something temporary and just making a little campsite. But, do, you know, spending the weekend up there in, in a campsite uh, hunting is fun. Uh, doe permits, find out having a doe permit you're going to have on a property. And also, and this is not a big deal, uh, can, you, can you cut firewood on it? It's a big deal to me because I've always, uh, I've always wanted to cut firewood uh, at, at wherever I go. So uh, we're going to, uh, uh, now, this is not live trees, of course. If it's been logged and those trees have been pushed down, that's what I'm talking about. Don't, don't cut into live trees, okay? And I think most of us know that. Let's look at, uh, got a couple of pictures here. Uh, let's look at some of these. This, this is really good. This first picture is, is, is not a Florida picture, but it's just got a great story behind it. This is a striper, and it's a record-setting striper from Lake Rabun, R Rabun, uh, R-A-B-U-N, Lake Rabun up there in Georgia. It was caught last week, 
and it was 39 pounds. Now, it almost doubled the old record. The old record was like 19 pounds. It did double the old record. That's Danny Wall. And what's interesting about this striper and why I put it on the show, why I want to talk about it, they've done some research on it, and they first put stripers in that lake in the year 2000. They're one inch long, and this came from that bunch, and they put them in there to control, I wrote it down, they would control the herring in that lake because the herring was getting out of control. So that, that striper is 15 years old, and... Uh, and it says a record like that. I just thought it was fascinating. That's a huge one. Uh, okay, and I, I want to just show this real quick. This, this has nothing to do with outdoors, but it's just a group of uh, my senior boys at Fusion Fitness Center. Every Friday morning, they meet and play basketball just for the fun. This is before school. This is at 6 o'clock in the morning. They just meet up there and just start playing a little half-court game because the game of basketball is fun. And I've always told my kids I just love to see them doing it. Uh, and uh, this is their senior year. They're, They'll have fond memories of doing that. I just want to throw that out, you know, and uh, you talked about last weekend, I got together with my high school buddies, and we would have done something like that when we were in high school if we had had an opportunity also. But we did it at different times, but uh, that, was, that just made an impression on me. Our next picture, we're talking about a Mako shark that was caught. I'm sure you've heard about it by now, but it was a big, big Mako, and uh, it, it was uh, 10 foot long. This was called Last Friday Night with the Shark Fisherman. And these are the pompano that were caught on a pier uh, uh, from, uh, let's see, Saturday morning, about mid-morning. Uh, the lady uh, came down from, uh, well, Rachel Munn had it on, uh, Pan on Panama City Fishing. Uh, she came down from Ozark. I got this on PC Fishing uh, website. And they, that's a nice bunch. And uh, caught them on live shrimp, and she was about eight pilings out. So I'll tell you exactly where they were caught. Now, I don't mean the big run is on, but there were, also, there were some caught last weekend. Uh, some other folks uh, uh, caught some. Jerry Lassiter. Jerry, uh, I've known Jerry a long time. Went to, he went to high school in Godby High School in Tallahassee. Came over here working in the Sheriff's Department, SRO. Worked himself up to be assistant principal. He's retired now. You see what he's doing. Uh, good, good bass fishing there. All right, here's a good picture here. This is, this is probably the last, last one we show of, of deer hunting. This is Braden Harris. I want to show this because this is Braden's third buck this year. A good job, Braden. That, uh, Andy Brimer, and that's Andy in the background. Of course, that's Michael, the dad on the lower right hand corner. Y'all know Michael and Braden. That was just an exciting time to end out their hunting season this year. And congratulations, Braden, on, on three bucks, buddy. All right, how about Steve Ward over in East Bay, uh, East Bay Redfish? That's a good picture there. There wasn't a lot of them caught, but uh, that, that was in a, in a good picture. Here's a young man I have on me, Evan Zachary. He's a regular just about on the show. He's, got, he's always got a big smile and, and a nice fish. Uh, that's a, a nice one there, Evan. Good job. And uh, don't forget the National Wild Turkey Federation of Holmes Creek. Their meeting uh, would be on, uh, doors going to open at 5 o'clock on the 12th. That's, the, that's tonight, okay? And I want to talk more about that later. Then the last picture here, Colby Etheridge, Colby Eldridge, I'm sorry, up at Deer Point Lake. He and his dad went fishing. They, they caught some nice bass up there. Good, good job there. All right, that takes care of our, our preacher. Let's go ahead and take a quick break and we'll be right back. Uh, welcome back. We're talking about the uh, Holmes County uh, National Wild Turkey Federation meeting tonight. Also, uh, down in Gulf County, the Panhandle Sportsman Group is meeting around 5 o'clock. And also, Lynn Haven, Met, Lynn Haven Baptist are having their wild game. We've got three things going on tonight. So it's, I'm just going to flip a coin, I think, or draw straws and see which one I'm going to. I'd love to go to all three of them. I really would. Now, if we get Saturday night over in Blunstown, National Wild Turkey Federation is having their gathering. So some good stuff here. Speaking of good stuff, got a uh, message from Nat Harris. He said, hey, Winston, my wife was very pleased with the $20 gift certificate from Tarpon Dock. She won last week's drawing. Uh, they have by far the best seafood in Panama City. Have the Spanish come in yet? I drove for an hour and had no luck. Let us know when they show up. Keep up the good work and keeping us informed. Thanks again, Nat Harris. The Spanish have not come in. You're going to find some scattered ones, and we're going to talk about that. But uh, first, uh, let's talk about uh, this video coming up on. This is a uh, about a seven or eight-minute video on surf fishing. I've done this video before, but it's, it's so important on how to surf fish. And I'll just show you uh, how, how I set up for it, and I... I get tickled at, at a lot more people surf fishing 
now than when I first started doing this show. But one of the first things I did talking about the show was if people didn't have boats, they'd go fish off the river bank or go surf fishing. And I really did a lot of, in my early years, did a lot of surf fishing videos. And I'm not saying it influenced a lot of people. I do know this, on the west end of Panama City Beach, people started popping up surf fishing where they hadn't done it for a long time. Uh, they, they used to do it over there on 30A, but 30A sort of got crowded. So surf fishing is real popular now. And the simple reason it's popular is because Number one, it's easy to do. You don't have to, have to do a lot of preparation for it. You just go down there and put your poles in the ground. And number two, you can catch fish on, on given times and all. And, and it's, it's a lot of fun. You can relax while you're doing it. You don't have to worry about getting a boat in and out or over here and over there and all. So surf fishing has been one of my all-time favorites from day one when I first started fishing it down here on the beach and all. All right, so we're going to watch this video of sort of how to surf fish. I was down at Cape San Blast, and I want you to notice how many people on the beach, how crowded it is, okay? Jeff, let's roll this video. All right, folks, we're down here going surf fishing. Now, we're at the beach now. We got everything packed up last night. And I waited a little bit later to film this. I'm usually here right here at daybreak. I just want to show you how we set up when you're down here fishing at, at the uh, beach, right here surf fishing. First thing I do now, I take my, my rod holders. I always put an angle, an angle like this. Okay, get it started right there. Cloth on top. That's all we do right there. So I have I have three rod holders set up. I usually fish a, a three pole rig if it's just myself. Okay, next now I'll make sure my bait is set up. I have this five gallon bucket. I have this board right here. Set it up here. I love my cart. You put a little tackle box right here above my cart on the shelf. Take my knife out, it goes right in here. Okay, now we're basically set up. I got my chairs. I got a part of the day, so I got two chairs. Set up like this. The bait I'm gonna use today, I, I usually have fresh shrimp. These are fresh frozen. Got them out of here, put some here to start thawing out. I, I'll get the water on them in a minute. I'll we'll go ahead and get them out. They're frozen now. Also, uh, I have some fiddler crabs today. Check this out. I'm going to try some fiddler crabs. I couldn't find any sand fleas, so we're going to try some fiddler crabs. But this is basically the setup. I have in my in my buggy here, I got this little basket, and it works great. It's going to put all the stuff in. I'll talk about the tackle box later, but we're going to go ahead and bait up. And get the poles out there. So when I bring my poles, I'm gonna fish with two hook rig, and these got little floats on them to keep the bait off. And I, I don't put my weight on until I get down here. Now this is my heavy, long distance rod, so I'm gonna put a sort of a large four ounce triangle weight on it, so I'm gonna try to cast it out as far as I can on this particular one. Okay, on baiting now, like I say, I like to peel the shrimp. Okay, peel the shrimp. Now put it on one or two ways. Sometimes I slide it completely lengthwise and sometimes I will double it according to the size and all. This one I'm just going to double over like that. I put that on the top hook. Now on the bottom hook today, okay, I have some fiddler crabs. I'll show you where to, where to hook those. I'll go right here to the bottom, right here in the center. Okay. Hook them. These hooks are a little large for what I wanted to, today. But anyway, they're still alive and they're in good shape there. I like to leave the pinchers on. It's more of a traction, I think. So that's basically, I, use as a sand flea here. I couldn't find a sand flea today. We just don't use fiddle crab. Okay, now I got a piece of shrimp on the top and a fiddle crab on the bottom. So I'm going to cast it out. I'm going to to the top on my cast.
reel in the slack too, so it won't be slack. for the first one. Check it out. It's about 9.45, about 10 o'clock. Small one. It's going to be legal size, though. Got a little piece of shrimp, and the shrimp's not even fresh. I think I found a hole, though. We're going to see. I found that hole. I caught some whiting already, and uh, been a good morning so far. Like I said, now I fish with a three three pole rig, and uh, I have a, on this far end down here is a 14 footer. Uh, on right here in the middle is about an eight footer, and on the end down there is a 10 footer. Now, I, it's a pretty long rod because I like to get it out there past the uh, sandbar. Now one of the most important things now, if you'll notice how they lean, they'll lean forward. Okay, they don't go straight up; they lean forward. The reason for that, when you bring it in and before you bait it, if it's straight up, it's going to get tangled up. So always lean it forward, and the, and the line hangs down while you bait it. So always, always lean it forward. Okay, now another little thing too I picked up over the years that I like to do. I always like to have a pair of pliers, but they're always hard to find. You put them in your pocket. I try to get these pants that have these little loops on them. And what you do, you just loop it through like this, double it over. Okay, pull it down and you got them by your side all the time, just like that. That's always like to have them and get them up to use. That's just another little thing I do. Now, for young people out there, now you can't do this rig if you have your pants on the ground. You got your pants on the ground, pants on the ground. You can't be able to fish them if you have pants on the ground. Okay, now another tip, and y'all know this, but you always put on sunblock. Always put on your face and any kind of exposed area you have. It's just so important to do that. You go to any dermatologist, they'll tell you the importance of it. Okay, that wraps up on how to go surf fishing. And we, uh, we brought everything back, put it in the truck. I love, I love this cart here. This cart's important if you have a lot of people fishing. It's so easy to just put it in the back of your pickup truck and go back and forth with it. But now you don't have to have a cart. You can take a five-gallon bucket in one hand and a pole in the other hand and have a great time and catch some good fish that way. All kind of ways to go surf fishing. I encourage you to surf fish all along the Panhandle. Some great places to go. So that's going to wrap it up. I'm Winston Chester for Panhandle Outdoors. How to go surf fishing. See you later. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that. Again, now early morning is an ideal time to go. Of course, there's an isolated beach down there, but up here at Panama City Beach, or over around uh, South Walton, it's, it gets crowded about nine o'clock on. But you can you can hit it from about six to eight pretty strong and uh, catch a good mess of fish. So uh, send me some pictures and all what, all, what are you doing, okay? Marcus Parrish is good about doing that. Now let's uh, look at our fishing game forecast today, brought to us by Mark Coward of Edgewater Beach Realty. Mark's number is eight five zero eight three two six thousand times today. 454 to 654. Let's just say from 5 to 7. You still got time to go catch a fish right there. And then also looking at this evening from 520 to 720. And that's a good time to go there. 
I had brought my, uh, we're going to go from now, fishing in the surf to Spanish mackerel. And that Harris had asked about the Spanish and all. And people asked, I talked to some people last Friday night at the first Methodist cookout down there. One of the guys wanted to know more about rigging. He said, he loves the show, but he wants me to show more about rigging. And, and so I'm going to talk about uh, catching Spanish mackerel. And uh, first, let's go in, if you're casting it all for them, these, uh, these gotcha plugs, and they're different colors. It's a, a gotcha plug. You have a treble hook here. Then hook on top, and these are three different sizes, okay? Here's a yellow one, here's a smaller gold one, and here's the smallest one that's silver. Of course, they all come in different sizes called gotcha, G-O-T-C-H-A, gotcha plug. So those are good for casting off the jetties. They're, they're, they, they are heavy, and you can throw them at a good distance, okay? And you can even troll with these, but most people are trolling. Uh, they're going to take a, what I call a straw rig or what, uh, I didn't name that, but everybody calls it a straw rig. And I, okay, and it just, I got it wrapped around. And what it is, is see the colors and all on here? And you got a hook. I want to see if I can get this unwrapped and all. There's a good way to keep it up and you can store them because they, they become, they can really get tangled if you just throw them in the boat. So you don't want to do that. So anyway, the straw rig is going to have, basically, you can see all the different colors and all. And then at the end, it's going to have a silver uh, silver spoon and all and then uh, and then up here you go and you put different if you want to uh, get it deeper you put a weight on the front of it it's a good heavy uh, line it's about a 20 pound line so it's, it's good and all and when they're running they'll they'll tear this up uh, it is really good a straw rig okay it's a little tangled there but I got it that way on purpose so I can show it to you like that okay a straw rig and you can keep in fact see this little box right here I keep all, all this all this is paraphernalia except the straw rig is in here also have the silver spoons, fishing off the jet, there's all kinds of silver spoons. They come in all shapes and all sizes, but uh, you want that flash. See how that flash is right there? That's the important thing when you're looking for Spanish mackerel. They're just going to hit flashes, hit flashes. And when they're at thickest, uh, I just sit back and try to get, take the uh, grandkids and let them catch a fish because they get a kick out of a trolling farm. And I'm going to show you tomorrow there in fishing forecast exactly where when they come in the bay system here and also over in Choctaw and Apalachicola Bay and St. Joe Bay, where they will be when they first come in there, okay? I've run out of time for today. Don't forget tomorrow will be the famous Friday fishing forecast, and we'll be drawing for some more free seafood from Trophy Rock Seafood. So if you haven't registered now, always send me an uh, email or whatever, or call me, and we'll put you in there, all right? You have a great day. Do something good for your fellow man. Enjoy the great outdoors, and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle on Tours with Winston Chester. Panhandle on Tours features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle on Tours.